Today we are going to discuss about the impact of screen time on academic perform performance. Is anything that we can do to have better achievement at school or to help the children that we are working for to have better achievements? Is the screen a way to um, help them to learn faster and to retain and other and afterwards to use the information in the in the right way we're going to see which is the general impact of using screens and afterwards some details that can can matter in this situation which is the impact of screen time on language development and also there are some cognitive functions that can, can be affected by exposing to different um, TV programs, Life, lifestyle factors that can influence the academic performance, and afterwards, um, which is the best combination and a call to action. Do you remember this chart from yesterday? <laughs> there is a huge impact of screen overuse. Yesterday, we have talked about emotion and behavior. And today, we're going to, uh, to discuss a little bit about cognitive and physical impact of screen time. It is said that screen time can affect children's vocabulary, executive skills, play quality, language acquisition, concentration, and comprehension, especially for those under the age five. The researchers say that the younger um, the child, the worse the outcome of ex being exposed to screens. And it's interesting that the result, you cannot see it just immediately, but in years. So they discovered that when children are exposed at, the, at a younger age to different program, TV programs, they will have problems when they want to have a good job or they want to go to the, to the university, they will have low grades because they have been exposed to screens when they were five or six or whatever. It's not only about what they do in a specific uh, moment, but on a long term. That's why we have to be aware of which are the activities that we encourage people to be uh, involved in. And that's why we have to be aware also for ourselves as adults to see what we can do better in order to have better cognitive and emotional performances. Most of the time, parents are very happy that their children can learn um, faster the words. The language development is one of the targets of this screen exposure. But I have found a study. It's very recently published in 2024. So it's very fresh. And this is a synthesis, synthesis, synthesis of different studies. So they, um, they, do, they did a research to see which study was done on language development and screen exposure, these two ver uh, variables. And I have seen that. What you seen uh, to see in the left is just the, uh, the author, the, the title, and on the right, you're going to see the, the results. And they are like this. Out of, I think uh, they are, um, the study was done on uh, children between uh, 0 and 12 years old. And they are associated like this. There are 12 studies, I think, 15 studies. Out of them, 9 had um, has seen a very unfavorable effect on academic performance after they have been exposed to screens. Two of them favorable effect and five of them not significant. So nine, five, and two. Yes, there, are, there might be some benefits from being exposed to screens, but the majority of studies say that there is an unfavorable unfavor effect. Well, 
Romanian language is quite, it's easier for me. <laughs> Hopefully you are going to learn Romanian better <laughs> next time we are, when you are going to be here. Okay, so we are going to have longer presentation and more um, complex presentation, but this is what I can offer today. So coming back, do you remember from yesterday what we have discussed to be the most important factors that can influence, influence in a more beneficial way the screen time for children? Age. Okay, they, there were three ver uh, variables. One of them to be an ed educational program. The second one, it's important to um, to respect the time recommendation. And the third one, to be supervised by a parent or an adult. When I have these variables together, I might expect to have good results from being exposed to screens. Otherwise, when there is fictitious content, where the time extended uh, above the recommendations. And when the child is exposed, um, just is watching on uh, his own, then I'm going to expect lower results because of uh, this activity, let's say. But when you, we put them together, we might expect benefits. But the majority of the results say, we have to be aware that there, is, there are some dangers from being exposed to these screens. So we can use them, but uh, with caution, okay? There are some cognitive functions. When I say cognitive, that is um, the reasoning part of our brain, okay? Or the ability to concentrate, to pay attention to something, the um, working memory and things like this. And it says, uh, one study says like this, Background televisions, television exposure, has been described as having attention getting, whether and how quickly children orient to a stimulus, but not attention holding, okay, properties. So they are catcher of attention, but they cannot keep the attention. So even though the television uh, is in background, even so, the child might uh, be affected by, by it because the attention is cut in pieces, okay? So um, let's imagine that the child is playing with uh, his toys and from background there are some noises that come and go, come and go, and the attention is cut. On a short term, we can um, see some bad results like restlessness. But on the long term, there might be an influence, a risk factor for ADHD. For children that cannot concentrate too for a long time, okay, they have attention deficit. And having a background television might be a risk factor for this kind of disorder. So it's attention getting, not a attention holding. Other thing, because uh, you've asked me yesterday about benefits. There are some benefits, we have to put them in the right box. So video game time when men were 11 years old is positively associated with working memory at 22 years old. So uh, they have been exposed to uh, video gaming when they were 11 and they, um, assess them years uh, later, and they have seen that if the children, boys in a special way, if they have been exposed to video uh, playing games, they have, um, they had better working memory uh, scores. Working memory is the ability to use the information in a specific time, very quickly. Like uh, when, I don't know, you want to do a recipe to cook something, and you need to know the sequence of uh, ingredients, when to put them, um, the amount 
of each ingredient, then you're using your working memory, okay? So it is said that playing video games increases this ability to use uh, the information in a specific time. But uh, I've, I tried to find, but I didn't uh, get any result on the impact of screen time for memory on a long term. I don't know which is the influence because there are some benefits. They are for, uh, for only for boys, this result. But we have to do taking into consideration that also the content is important. We have these benefits from playing video games, but what we get beside this benefit? Violence, some immor immorality, okay? They, they are trained to kill people or maybe to succe succeed um, no matter what, okay? And this information are um, introduced in the minds of uh, the children. Okay, I have some benefits, but I have to uh, weigh the, um, the risk for, for each of them, okay? Another thing, it's about children, but because we are interested in this subject for adults also, I've put it some information about this. Effects of more than four hours per day of TV viewing for adults increases the risk for dementia, Parkinson's disease, stroke, and decreases the gray matter volume and hippocampus volume. Why this, all these things happen? Why do you think it happens? Hmm? Why to increase the risk of dementia? Yeah, yeah, indeed, the effectiveness of um, the brain is, isn't used when you are exposed to screens because it's a very passive activity, let's say. You cannot put these words together, but uh, it's like this, okay? So you don't use your brain too much. Other, uh, other thing, why do you think this connection it is? Okay, so it's a repeated action without... Okay, because this behavior, it's a sedentary behavior. And this, this itself increases the risk for all of these diseases but it's a combination of sedentary behavior and the fact that they are exposed to different TV programs, okay? It's not, it's doubled, let's say, the risk. For instance, um, the hippocampus volume, uh, it's correlated with um, decreased memory and the ability to learn something. Okay, is, is the brain region responsible for learning and memorizing? And some, when somebody is exposed for too long to screens, they increase the risk of dementia because they sit and also because they don't use their neurons and also because this activity disconnects the neurons because they don't need them. It's an information, uh, secondary information you don't need me, I'm going to leave the room, okay? There are some details that can be interesting for you also. For instance, more than two hours per day of screen time, whether passive or active, is associated with low performance at school. So they perform low at school because they had more than two hours per day of screen exposure. Whether passive or active, what means passive? What means active? What is an active screen time? Video Playing video games, yeah. 
It's a very engaging activity, playing video games. Something else? Sorry? Trying to book a ticket. <laughs> and, and come to integrate us, right? It's the best option, the best cognitive engaging activity. <laughs> OK, good. Something else? Sports watching. Well, interesting uh, example. Might be because you somehow play in your mind um, while the other, while, while you see the other um, playing. Yeah, writing. Do doing a research. <laughs> yeah. Okay. These are examples of active screen time. Passive means just watching TV. But even though it's an doing a homework where we can put it on active activities. But as you see, even though you do a, the child is doing his homework, even so, they will have low performance at school. No matter if they watch something or they are working. Even so, there are, there are some benefits. But we have to be aware that they can benefit more if they write by hand their homework, by far. OK. We are going to see later some tips that we can use, maybe some other activities that can really increase the academic performance. Other thing, screen, screen time guideline, if they uh, uh, stick to the rules. They are going to read more, OK? And which uh, are the rules? Do you remember from yesterday which were the recommendations that uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, did? OK, so children under two years, how much should be exposed to screens? Not at all. Children between two and five years old, how much should they, should, uh, should they be exposed to screen time, okay, less than one hour, okay, and children, children between five and uh, seventeen years old, less than two hours, okay. If they meet this recommendation of screen time, they are going to watch less television, okay. This is a study done for children uh, between um, under five years old to five years old, and they observed that they were reading much, not two to five. It's primary school age children. OK, so if they don't watch screens, they're going to uh, read more. OK, quite logical, common sense. OK, what so much interesting in this slide? And if they don't follow the, the guideline, as a consequence, they are going to watch too much. Uh, TV programs, and they are going to read less. Do you see anything interesting, so, or you don't see that something is missing, or do you have any questions regarding this slide? Yeah. Where do you put the bottom? It's the reference. 48 minutes per day of reading, 52 minutes per day of screen time, and in the right, if they don't follow the guideline, they are going to read less, 30 minutes per day, and they are going to watch e extensively more uh, screen time, 162. Where do you put reading from a screen? You don't say it here. It's a reading activity or it's a screen time activity? Why? You're pretty sure about it. It's blue light. And you won't be able to sleep to, uh, you won't be able to sleep 
properly because you are exposed to blue light. It seems that when you are reading, you activate activate specific regions in your brain. And this doesn't happen when you read information from a screen. So where you read information from a screen, you're not reading, you are watching. That's why reading from a screen is not so effective. It's not like watching a cartoon or a movie. Okay, it's not like this, but it's not as effective as reading from a physical book. Okay? Bible? Yes. <laughs> The blue light is connected, it's linked with sleep rather than the way our brain um, understands the information. Okay? Because I don't know, there are some um, brain friendly screens like from Kindle, but um, it seems that our brain understands differently, engages cognitively differently when you read it from a screen or when you read it from a physical book. Brother Marius, you wanted to say something? Well, I think um, he won't be admitted in this world anymore. <laughs> well, I think it's quite impossible to not be exposed at all. But I think that we have to be wise in the time that we invest, or we allow children to be exposed to screens. Because we can use these devices um, in a properly way, and this can increase children's vocabulary, or their ability to know other cultures and also to do our research and things like this. But it's important to, it, it, it differences, it depends on age of, the children, of uh, the children, but also it depends on the time they spend in front of any screen. Okay? You're welcome. At least for uh, uh, some of us. Okay, thank you. I think that, um, yeah, there is a um, perfect world. We are no longer in it. So we have to deal with the temptations and we have to use the tools that we have um, in the best way, okay? Uh, I know that uh, it's important for children not to not be exposed at all as much as possible, okay? Because they're going to develop a sound mind like this. But otherwise, I don't think that we have to cover their eyes when they are in... I don't know, in um, their friend's house because they are not allowed to watch, I don't know, a Christian cartoon or something like this, okay? As much as possible, I think it's good. And otherwise, we have to um, be very aware of the content, of timing, and um, yeah, any other thing that we can do in the real world, world to, be, um, to be like this. We're going to go further and uh, we're going to discuss about, uh, about some lifestyle activities that can increase the, the, the ability of children to learn better and to be better at school, okay? So, and this study, um, I'm going to pick up the information from this study and 
One of the images that I found uh, in the study is this one. What do you understand from this image? That life is complicated, right? <laughs> Well, it seems quite interesting that somebody can understand something like this. But hopefully, there are words, even though they are in, in English, but they, there are words that can explain better images like this, okay? So we can go further. It seems that skipping the breakfast has a negative impact on the academic performance of children. They cannot concentrate enough to what they have to do in their classes. But I have to mention one thing. When the breakfast is full of uh, sugar, there, there won't be the same benefits. Because a lot of sugar in their breakfast is going to decrease their attention. They won't be able to concentrate at the lesson of the classroom. And this is true also for adults. If you want to travel somewhere, to have a long journey. It's better n to avoid a diet rich, a breakfast rich in carbohydrates. Because this is going to reduce your attention and your ability to react fast in different situations. And this is also true for children. If you want somebody to be more active and they uh, you want better grades uh, to their test. It's good to have a balanced diet with a lot, with a lot of fibers, for instance, okay? But what it happens that we would we eat sugars or eat sweets and say, okay, I want to learn something, then I have to eat something sweet in order to concentrate better. What it happens is that after, after that we eat something sweet, then increases the level of dopamine. Dopamine is going to give, uh, to give us motivation and energy. But afterwards, they're going to the, the dopamine level is going to decrease below the level that um, it had um, when I started to eat that sweet. And that's why I want to eat more and my concentration also decreases a lot. So it gives me energy but not focus. Other thing, sleep duration is very important. It's better sleep, it's linked with better cognition and uh, higher academic performances among children and adolescents. Whether shorter sleep duration, less than six hours, can de deteriorate higher order cognitive functioning required for performing complex tasks, such as executive functioning. Why sleep matters. They can rest and they con can concentrate better. Is anything more than this? Why sleep is so important? The cells recover during the night because. Okay. Because. During the night, the process of learning continues. So you memorize while you sleep. During the day, you catch the information with your frontal lobe, okay? And afterwards, they are sent to hippocampus. But for the information to uh, get into the uh, cortex, the cerebral cortex, you need sleep. If you sleep the amount of hours necessary and you s your sleep starts no, um, no later than 10 p.m., then your, the information are going to be taken from hippocampus and uh, connected with the other information from the cortex. If a person doesn't sleep well, or its sleep starts, I don't know, at 12 p.m., then they will have problems with learning and memorizing, okay? This is a very, very important information because we can learn faster, easier, if we sleep 
during the night, okay? This is not, this, does, this doesn't apply to the uh, daytime sleeping, okay? Just for the night sleeping and also very important, the first part of the night, not the, not the first time of sleep, but of night. Then it's the critical period when we memorize things. That's why children has, have to sleep the best way possible, okay? Because then they can recover faster, they can memorize, they can retain information and afterwards they will be able to use them. Not only to know information, but to integrate them in the perfect uh, context. About the threshold of one hour per day of screen time, the risk of sleep disorder increases with more TV viewing time. So if they are exposed to different TV programs, they are going to have poor sleep. And because they have poor sleep, they are going to have bad academic performances. Okay, so you have also screen time affects academic performance. Then because of the fact that you or the, ch the child was exposed to screens, they'll have poor sleep. And because of these factors, they are going to increase a lot their risk of poor academic performances, okay? Okay, so the first pillar is sleep. The second pillar, very important and in the performance of academic, the performance of children in this academic field, it's physical activity. And here are some benefits of physical activity. Increases memory, executive function, verbal skills, mathematical skills, and attention. Why all these things? Just because they do physical activity. It's not something programmed. Playing, it's a very good physical activity. Okay, a very good physical activity, very complex activity. Why this happens? Because it's not only the blood that um, comes in the brain. But also during physical activity, it secreted a, a, uh, a substance that is called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This BDNF increases the risk of the risk, increases the recovery process of neurons, and also is one of the factors that increases the neurogenesis uh, process. So I don't know if you uh, were taught the same biology as I did, but my teacher taught me that if you are born with a number of neurons, you have to hold them fast because you are going to lose them while going through this life. And you are going to remain with two tiny neurons that don't know where we are and who I am. But it seems that there is a process called neurogenesis the, uh, when neurons can be made new. Okay, new neurons can come in this world because there is something that stimulates them. There are two regions in our brain that produces neurons. One of them is hippocampus. Do you remember what this, uh, what regions, uh, what re what this region does? Hippocampus. I told you a little bit earlier. It's about learning and memory. So, each day, almost 700 neurons are born in this region. So. Daily, our mind has the ability to, re to be renewed daily. There are some activities that can increase this process, like physical activity. Do you guess what other activity or what other behavior can increase the number of neurons that can be made daily? Fasting. Fasting. Indeed, fasting is the second fasting, is the second cause that stimulates neurogenesis. 
the two most important factors are physical activity and fasting. You can do intermittent fasting, to have two meals a day without uh, anything uh, in between, okay? And to fast at least uh, 14 hours per day. Then you are going to stimulate the neurogenesis. And this is uh, applicable also for children. If they eat all the day long, they are going to reduce this process, okay? And other thing very important when it, come to, it comes to neurogenesis is that there are some new neurons, but it's important to keep them alive. And intellectual activity is the condition to keep them alive. So it's important to do physical activity, to fast, but it's important to work our brain. How that Without it, you're going to lose the neurons that you create, bad fasting, bad physical activity. It has to be hard in order to increase this, this process, okay? I think that I've done a lot of neurons with these presentations, <laughs> okay? This, is, this was one study that caught my attention. It says, the replacement of screen time with moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity, even if only for one minute, was associated with a reduction in the risk of different indicators of cardiovascular disease. We talk about children, okay? This reinforces the importance of reducing spend, time spent in front of screens and the significance of moderate to vigorous physical activity in line with the global recommendation. It's like begging at least one less minute of screen time, one minute more of physical activity, please, please. It's going to bring you a lot of very good things in your life. Please, at least one minute, change the things. At least one minute, please. This is how I read this, uh, uh, this sentence. The author say, okay, you can try to do some changes. Even small changes count. They are very, very important, very important for your health and also for the health of children. So, which were the pillars that we've talked so far that can influence academic performance? Sleep, good breakfast, nutrition, physical activity, and screen time. These are the four, um, four factors, okay? But where there is um, a combination, I think it's even better. The general recommendations are like this. For screen time, for this is uh, adolescence, okay? Less than two hours per day. Sleep, they have to sleep at least eight to 10 hours per night. And they have to do at least 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity, okay? These are the general recommendation. Sleep physical activity and screen time. Let's see what's happened when we stick to the rules. These are uh, the conclusion of uh, one study. It says that when we have the combination between moderate to vigorous physical activity plus screen time or sleep, okay, when they meet the criteria uh, um, uh, that the recommendation from guideline. When they meet this combination, physical activity plus screen time or sleep, they get 20, they get 40 points more at numeracy. The ability to, um, they perform better of mathematics, okay? They get only through this combination, physical activity with screen time or sleep, 40 points more at numeracy. And this, Added points at numeracy means one year of schooling. So they can be in advance only because they do physical activity and they meet the criteria for sleep or screen time. So meeting these criteria for physical activity and sleep or screen time increases their um, academic performance since they are going to be in advance. If they play, if they run, if they do whatever activity, and they have a good sleep, 
they are going to perform better at school. Something else. If they meet the criteria for sleep, eight to 10 hours, and in combination with screen time, less than two hours, they will have more 55 points at literacy, the ability to read and write, okay? And when they have this plus 55 points at literacy, it means three years of schooling. So, meeting the criteria for sleep and screen time, they are going to be in advance with three years of schooling. Is it difficult? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think that Dana has an example. I don't know if you're ready to share it with us, but uh, she told me um, of one of her, st of her students that met some criteria. <laughs> Recently, a girl transferred to our school in my class and she was homeschooled before, so She's 18 by now, and she never had a smartphone. When she came, she had a lot of gaps in mathematics because, for example, she never studied geometry or trigonometry or other concepts. So she struggled a little bit, but when I explained her few things and the things that, yeah, the concepts that she didn't know, she grasped them uh, yeah, immediately, and after that, she became the best student in my class. I mean, she's, she does 100% uh, in every test, and she's able to work for four hours in mathematics with no problem. She concentrates very well, and yeah, and it's not only in mathematics, also uh, her teachers are here, and they can uh, say that it's, and not uh, only academically, but emotionally, she is very well. Uh, she integrated very well in, among her uh, colleagues. And also she has a good uh, sense of humor. <laughs> when a teacher of her um, called me and she asked me, give me her phone number because I want to call her. I tell her, you know, uh, your teacher wants uh, wants uh, you to give her your phone number and she said you know tell her to write me a letter because I don't have a smartphone <laughs> yeah well um, I it's not the only example that proves that screen time decreases academic performance thank you very much Dana it seems that it's not impossible, okay, to live in this uh, this world without being exposed to technology. Um, and uh, small steps can increase great changes. So, uh, I found this recommendation in one um, in one study, and they give recommendation for everybody: screen-based media used by young children recommendation. They have recommendation for parents. They have recommendation for medical uh, profession professionals. They have recommendation for media industry, uh, for policymakers. So they have recommendation for, for everybody. So each of us might be involved in this world that, want, uh, that we want to be different, that we want to um, help children to grow up very balanced, physically, mentally, spiritually. That's why I think that each of us can create a better way for them. We, we say that using technology, we help them, but it seems that it's not like this. We can help them in different ways, increasing their ability to learn faster, to learn more effectively. I'll pray, I'll close with this uh, verse. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. I don't take your devices, but please use them wisely. Thank you for being attentive. And I cannot finish without inviting you to Dumbrava Health Center. 
uh, if you haven't been yesterday to uh, my, my second presentation, uh, I've told you that I work here, I live here, I engage all my energy in this place. And if you want to visit it uh, virtually or physically, both of them, it is possible.